but can't express the heroic achievement of Satoshi Nakamoto because the heroic achievement was when he showed up on the scene having invented Bitcoin <laughs> and and the fact that uh, and it's not what he did do afterwards it's so much what he didn't do right he didn't spend coins willy-nilly he didn't undermine the project he didn't centralize it he didn't he, like he didn't it's all these things that he didn't do which all these other shit coins still do, right? And all the founders of these other shit coins still do, or all these people who try to take them over still do. And so it, it's just, it's really extraordinary. And, um, and that's that I think if you look at these two pieces together, they maybe give you a, a kind of this bigger picture, a little bit of a reflection into what was happening through history in the real world while Satoshi was here. But much more important, the zoom out and the big picture human history was going along, fiat money came along and started to destroy civilization, and out of nowhere, an anonymous, pseudo a pseudonymous individual gave the world, invented this thing and gave it to the world as a gift and asked for nothing in return. And that's pretty extraordinary, if you ask me. Whoever Satoshi Nakamoto was, he, she, it, they, although he, you know, addressed himself as a he in his writing, this correspondence, it doesn't matter. Love you know, is a word we often use. And in connection with Bitcoin, you know, there's uh, totally new portals opening up, a totally new rabbit hole that we can go into. So I'm really pleased, really honored to have Thomas Rolite on my show for the first time. He's a brilliant, really enlightening author. Uh, you should check out his articles, uh, for example, the best ones we're going to talk about today is why Bitcoin is worthy of love, why we need Bitcoin, Satoshi and me and Bitcoiners are not toxic, they have integrity and so many more. So he's a really gifted writer and we're going to talk about, you know, love, unconditional love, was Satoshi Nakamoto, you know, a giver, uh, you know, the embodiment of unconditional love with all his humility, his selflessness, his detachment from ego. And the you know living up to the true principles of ethos of integrity, uh, of uh, you know true uh, peace, right? In vision, and yeah. So without further ado, this is my talk with Thomas Rolite. Hope you're gonna enjoy this. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you follow me and Tomer on Twitter, and yeah, let me know what you think. Welcome to the show, Thomas Rolite. Thanks so much for your time. Really been ex been excited, you know, and thrilled to have you here. Been waiting for this uh, for this uh, talk for a long time, Tomer. So um, I'm a I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, you're you you know as I as I told you in our private discussion, um, you're a brilliant writer. You have a you know beautiful stylistic style. You know how to write, and uh, I think even you have, you are predestined, you know, to become a, a, a movie script writer or even documentary <laughs> script writer. So uh, without further ado, uh, welcome to the show, Tomer. Wow, thank you so much. And thank you for those words. They really warm my heart. Um, I, I, I write to share some of my passions. And so when uh, someone like you ends up appreciating it, uh, it's, it serves a big part of its purpose. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Listen, uh, so I reread your articles <laughs> because it just, you know, there's so many nuances in between the lines. And um, um, and I think for now, you know, as we discussed in our private conversation, I think we should focus on on, on, a, on a few articles of yours. Sure. And that is, you know, uh, why Bitcoin is worth of love, why we need Bitcoin, Satoshi and me. And Bitcoiners are not toxic. They have integrity. Super. So, Tomer, let me, yeah. let's try to, because what I'm really fascinated with is the psychology, emotional states, and the mindset of humanity, of the, you know, of the people out there. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, first of all, I want to ask you, what was the intention, the drive that, that made you write these articles with what kind of like spirit or motivation, yeah. intention did you write it? And what is the psychological, emotional, if I may say, soul disbalance that we are dealing with when it comes to, you know, educating people, when it comes to inspiring them, opening them up? What is like the driving force? Okay. Um, that's a lot of questions, and I may I may forget some portion of it. So we're talking about four specific articles, and I guess for the purpose of for the purpose of this discussion to wrap them up in a in a bow, all of these articles are about uh, why why Bitcoiners love Bitcoin, why Bitcoiners are good people, 
and why there's love and passion uh, inside of Bitcoin. So there, it's, it's a different angle than Bitcoin's really good money or Bitcoin's really technologically sound or, um, you know, Bitcoin will help us defeat an evil state. Like all of those things are true and more are true, but these, these are focused on this emotional aspect that many of us have. And um, I'll, I'll talk about these pieces in the order in which I, I wrote them. And again, just to review, so there's why Bitcoin is worthy of love, why we need Bitcoin. Both of those are available on my medium and they're also available in the free ebook that um, of the series that Swan Bitcoin's published, so swanbitcoin.com slash why Bitcoin. Um, so both of those are available there. Um, Satoshi and Me is a piece of creative writing um, that's available on citadel21.com, this month's edition, the first story when you click on it. And uh, Bitcoiners are not toxic, they have integrity, is also only available on my Medium right now. So tomerstrolight.medium.com. It's probably the second thing down after Why Bitcoin, uh, the series. Uh, so let's really dive into what each of them are and, and what got me there. So the first one, why Bitcoin is worthy of being loved. Um, it, it came as, as I was writing this 26 article series of why Bitcoin. And I knew deep down inside that I had this, I've been a Bitcoiner for eight years now. I really have fallen down the rabbit hole and it's more than, it's more than just those kind of objective questions. There's a real emotional connection, a, a real value of Bitcoin as something that's never existed before, something extraordinary, something special. And as I was writing these articles, I was becoming more uh, courageous about being more open about uh, how I really felt about these things, not just to the readers, but to my own self. Like, I, I don't know that I'd, well, I, I guess as I started the podcast, my own podcast that I ended up naming for the love of Bitcoin, I guess some part of me knew that there was, uh, there was this emotion of love. But what I wanted to do in that article is explain to people exactly as the title says, like, what is love? And is Bitcoin worthy of it? And so, so, I mean, when you talk about love from one person to another, Bitcoin's not a person. So we, we need to abstract the definition of love a little bit. And um, I don't know if you have the article handy. I, I can grab a copy mm -hmm. of it myself here. It's just beyond my reach. Yeah, I got your thomasstrolight.medium.com and yeah. the event.swanbitcoin.com site where you can download and uh, subscribe to the uh, why Bitcoin the series. Yeah, so so I, I laid out in this article, and it's only a three minute read. It might almost be worthwhile to read. I'll read a portion of it. Um, I, I laid out the definition of love, that love is this conditional thing. And in order to be, because you don't love everyone and you don't love everything. So what are the conditions that necessitate love? And I talked about being irreplaceable as one of these things, not betrayed. You know, so you, you can't really love something that betrays you, someone that betrays you. Being open and prepared to be scrutinized so that you can be, demonstrate your worthiness of love. And then I, I reflected all those things in, in the voice of Bitcoin. And, I, and so the, my excitement with this article or my passion with it was to say, well, if, if Bitcoin was talking to you and Bitcoin said, here's why I'm worthy of your love, this is what it would say. And, uh, and, and I was touched at the time that I wrote it. Um, and I, I wrote that uh, Bitcoin says the following to every individual on earth, it says. So this is the voice of Bitcoin speaking to you. I offer you the greatest instrument for money that has ever existed, Bitcoin. My construction ensures that this instrument supply is capped and knowable to you. It cannot be taken from you by force. You can give whatever portion of what you own to whoever you want to give it to for any reason. You can use it to store the efforts of your work for any duration of your choosing, even one that extends beyond your lifespan or the existence of the nation state in which you reside. I am bound to keep these commitments to you by nothing less than the inviolable laws of physics. Look upon me and you can verify all these claims. I ask not for your trust. I stand before you naked, open and transparent. You can inspect every part of me. My code is open and public. My records are public. You are welcome to keep copies and verify their accuracy continuously. If you can find any flaw in my claims, you may change me to correct me. 
but it must truly be a flaw for I'm watched over by millions of others and they will prevent any changes to me that will lead to a betrayal of my commitments. I will never force you to accept me, let alone love me. However, whenever you are ready, I will be here ready for you with my offer. I will never reject you under any circumstance, no matter what actions you have taken before. I am here to be judged, but I do not judge you. So that's, that's kind of, that's a social contract of Bitcoin. And, but it's put in a different fr framing than here's the Bitcoin white paper and here's all the functions, right? This is why Bitcoin is worthy of, of your business, your choice. And when you find something so extraordinary, so magnificent to participate in, I'm just trying to say it's okay to, it's okay to confess your love for it. It's okay to say that, um, that you love it. And so that's what the, the, that speech from Bitcoin, where I give it a voice, is sandwiched by, um, by the definition of love and, and why, therefore, it's, it's worthy of, your, of being loved. And um, yeah, I, I, like, I mean, I can go and answer all your other questions, but I, I don't know if you maybe want to dive into some of the questions about this article in particular. Yeah, there's just point. one point. There's one point. Uh, when I read your article, I don't know which is, I think it was that one where in the beginning it said something about love is conditional. It somehow yes. irritated yeah, me because I thought love by itself and in itself is actual, it, for me, uh, is uh, I know now now to elaborate and I understand you fully, mm. but I thought I thought you know love is uh, for me is unconditional. It just gives, and the more you give love unconditionally without expectations, the more you receive love. And I thought you know, and then and then I went into my rabbit hole. Why I was thinking, what is you know, what uh, what are like in between the lines? What what do we need to talk about? Do we need to talk about like fear of? of facing the truth, of honesty, of transparency, of, you know, of, uh, of transformation. Like mm -hmm. it, people are so conditioned and so obsessed with fear and, f and, and facing their own fears. And, and you know, and <laughs> it's like, where do you begin with, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, think, I think there's this expression, love is unconditional. There are you know, as human beings, there are certain things we love unconditionally, like our children, right? They, they can do almost anything and we're, we're going to take care of them, but we don't love every other human being unconditionally and we don't love everything, right? It, love really is those special things that we have that we hold in the highest esteem, uh, that there are most cherished values, the things we most want to protect and preserve and enjoy. Um, otherwise, if love, if love is equal for everything and everyone, it really means nothing. Right? Like I, say, I, I love potato starch. I love blue shirts. Uh, so love is not unconditional. Love actually has conditions. Um, I, think, I think one of these interesting traits about Bitcoin and why it's worthy of being loved is it accepts everyone unconditionally. Right? I have another article in the series saying Bitcoin is the most inclusive institution in the world. And another one saying why you don't need permission to use Bitcoin. And both of those dive into the fact that anyone in the world, anywhere, for all time from now on, can use Bitcoin and they can't be censored from it. And so it's a, it's a free speech platform. Um, it, is a, it is a platform that's available to anyone, anywhere. Um, and that, that is one reason to love it right? because it's unique amongst all those things. All, so many other systems are censored. They're walled off. They're protected by regulations um, and kept away from people. So this is, this is but one reason why Bitcoin is worthy of being cherished and praised and preserved and loved. And so that, that to me is, is a really, really important consideration. And, and I think, you know, there may be some people who laugh at the notion of Bitcoin being so worthy that it's worthy of the, of the term being loved. But I say, if you relax the, the definition, say, you know, there are things you can love, you can really love key lime pie, right? Like or a, a cheesecake, just, right? So if you can love a cheesecake, you sure as bloody hell can love Bitcoin because uh, it's, it's better than, it's better than cheesecake. Like it's, it's really this extraordinary one-off invention that's, that's never really existed. So, that, so that's kind of what got me there. And then as I continued to write, I felt the same thing about Bitcoiners. Um, and that led to, I think, two of these other articles. So the, the next one, which is also just three minutes, also in this series, is called Why We Need Bitcoin. So, you know, when I concluded uh, why Bitcoin's worthy of love, I said, Bitcoin is magnificent. It's an extraordinary creation. And I begin why we need Bitcoin with the sentence, 
talking to the reader saying, you are magnificent. You're a once in the history of the universe event. Nothing quite like you has ever existed before. And when you're gone, nothing exactly like you will exist ever again. And this article, um, and I, again, I encourage anyone listening or watching to, to read the whole thing, because it's all of three minutes out of your life to tell you how magnificent you are. Um, and it tells the reader to realize how much they actually love being themselves. And uh, so what does this have to do with Bitcoin? And the point that it makes is in order to be your most magnificent self, to be the best that you can be, you need a certain kind of freedom. You need to be able to plan your life. You need to be able to know that the actions that you take and the consequences that come from those actions are reliable. And it points out that in a world of fiat money, you can work to create something to plan for your future, to earn money in a sense, right? But the money means so many different things. Um, to save for your future and somebody else can come and seize it in a way, whether they seize it through taxation or through outright seizure, confiscation, or through inflation, which is the same thing. I mean, you know, they give more money to themselves. So your share of the wealth has diminished that distorts who you are. It, it, you know, it doesn't allow you to plan for the future. It makes you act in ways to get money from the people who have power over printing it. So I said, that makes you their puppet if you play to that, or it makes you their slave. And you're not a puppet and you're not a slave. You're a magnificent free human being. And that's why we need sound money. And that's why we need Bitcoin. So interestingly enough, I don't think I mentioned Bitcoin in the article, except for the title and the very last word. Um, but I, 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 go, I go through everything else and, um, and it's true, like we don't need, we don't need Bitcoin because it uses proof of work. We, Bitcoin needs to use proof of work. We don't need Bitcoin because it has a 21 million cap. Bitcoin needs to have a 21 million cap. We need Bitcoin because we need sound money to be, and why do we need sound money? We need Bitcoin because we want to be our most magnificent selves. And so that's the reduction of that argument. And, and why do we want to be our most magnificent selves? Well, maybe that, maybe that's <laughs> taken as, as a given, but we want, like, there's a desire to be, to be, to like, you've only got one life to live, <laughs> make the most of it. And it's not fair when other people are stealing your energy, they're stealing your time, whatever expression we want to use for this, distorting your time, um, enslaving you. Like, that's not, that's, that's not cool <laughs> to, to put, to put it in other terms. So, that's, that's the article why we need Bitcoin. And again, I, I think as I was writing these articles, they do start, if you read the whole series, they do start, um, I don't want to say mechanical. They talk about mechanical aspects of Bitcoin or interesting features of Bitcoin, but they re we get really abstract by the time we get to these articles because we're talking about things like you self-actualizing or you feeling an emotion like love towards Bitcoin. So if you have any other questions about this article, great. If not, we can move on. No, no, that's fascinating. Let's, let's, no, let's, let's, let's stay there where we are because uh, the reason, you know, as I told you in our private discussion is of talk last time, is that the one, is, one more essential reason why I love the articles is because it, it picks up the people or it touches the people on an emotional level. And because of the, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, uh, uh, the, the, how we've been growing up, the religious indoctrination for, I don't know, centuries going on, this dogma, the indoctrination, the conditioning, you know, this, this feeling of guilt and not being worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so much brainwashing indoctrination has been going on. I mean, since, mm -hmm. I don't know, even kindergarten or in the fetus of the mother, I mean, it begins already in mother's womb, you know, I mean, like it's the whole condition. Do you think feel guilty? Uh, I, th I think it takes a little while. I, I, I think babies are probably born tabula rasa, clean slate. Mm -hmm. uh, with mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you've you've mentioned to me you have a recently born daughter. I don't know if you were there at her birth, uh, but there's there's such a moment of innocence. Uh, yeah. the, the baby comes out, the baby cries, and you see it looking around the world for the first time. And it and it's not guilty, but it's suddenly. I, it's not its first moment of consciousness because it's obviously been conscious in the womb, but it's been in this warm, relatively safe environment. And suddenly the whole world is on it. It's dry. It's hungry. It needs to figure out how to latch onto mother's breast. It does. It sees other human beings for the first time. What a strange thing. Like it sees 
I don't know that babies open their eyes in the womb. I, I don't, I'm not a scientist about this, but I guess it sees, it opens its eyes for the first time. And so now things start to imprint on the child and, uh, and it's got all this innocence and all this hope and all this potential and all this fear and all this, it's got to sort out all of these things in life. But to your point, guilt is a terrible, terrible emotion. And again, one of the greatest injustices is unearned guilt, right? To make someone feel guilty for something that they have not done is vicious, right? It's like, you know, we, so many people have been thrown in jail for victimless crimes. This is especially true in the United States. Um, it's a, such a sin. It, like, you know, they've hurt nobody and they've been told that they're guilty and they've been punished for it. And, and worse, psychologically, they've had, they're, they're torn. Like, I guess I did something wrong. I, sh you know, I, I w somehow I deserve to be treated this way. So just if anybody's listening who's dealing with a sense of guilt, and we're going to talk about this in the next article, make sure that you've earned that guilt. Because if you haven't earned that guilt, you should absolutely under no circumstances feel the suffering um, of that guilt because it, it's somebody else's twisted mind that's trying to impose guilt on you there's, and there's nothing wrong with you. Now, you may have made some mistakes and you may feel guilty about them and you may need to apologize or make amends, uh, but that, that's okay. Like that, that's, that's the path through guilt. Um, and, but there's no path through unearned guilt because if someone says, and, and we'll, go, we'll go straight into it because it's the next article uh, about Bitcoiners are not toxic, they have integrity. If somebody ju judges you guilty of something for having done nothing, there's no way to make amends. There's no way to correct it. Like you haven't done anything wrong, so how are you gonna, how are you gonna correct it? And so the, I guess that is my transition to the article that I wrote exactly a week ago called Bitcoiners are not toxic, they have integrity. And it was just the beginning phase of all of this FUD that was coming out. Uh, we were having, a ch Bit Bitcoin is bad for the environment. Bitcoiners should feel bad about it. Bitcoiners are harsh on shit coins. They should feel bad about it. Bitcoiners defend proof of work. They should feel bad about it. Uh, I, I cite in the article early on uh, a quote from Lex Friedman, who I don't have anything at all against, uh, but he, it's a tweet that he makes saying, you know, toxicity is no, may have once been a feature of the Bitcoin system. Now I think it's a bug. So that's his judgment. I disagree. Um, and and what I try to paint in the whole article is what we are accused of as being toxic is not, is a terrible distortion. Again, we we have something special, something worthy of love. <laughs> if I tie it back, uh, something extraordinary and magnificent that never existed before and that would ne will never exist again if we compromise on it. So we don't compromise on it. We maintain its integrity. We protect its integrity. We preserve its integrity. And this article was really, um, I, I think, spurred on inside of me. I, I hadn't seen the Lex Friedman quote because he has blocked me out of love on Twitter, but I, I found it afterwards. But it was it was in direct response to last weekend's um, back and forth on Twitter between, I guess, I, I mean, there were a lot of people involved, but the, the key episode was, Peter McCormack wrote a nice long tweet thread to Elon Musk, not even knowing that he would respond. And Elon said, obnoxious tweets like this make me want to go all in on Bitcoin. So Peter, with integrity and honor and honesty, laid out the argument for Bitcoin and the argument against something unsupported and undeveloped like Dogecoin. And Elon Musk says, I want to go in on, I want to go all in on Bitcoin or on Dogecoin, on Dogecoin, for, okay. on Dogecoin yeah. uh, and disregarding all of the reasons why Bitcoin needs to maintain its integrity. And so that for me was okay. And here's the perfect example. And, and, and that's why, that's why Lex Friedman wrote the tweet that he did, because he cites, oh, Bitcoiners drove Elon Musk away. Bitcoiners didn't just accidentally drive Elon Musk away is one of the points I make in the article. We told him, if you'll forgive the rude language, to go fuck himself. Right in that exactly. tone of voice, yeah. if, and if go sell his across, Bitcoin, be, I mean, if he wants right. to. We said, do it. Right, I wrote, yeah. do it, bitch. When he threatened to sell his Bitcoin, like, so I, am I toxic? 
No, I'm preserving the integrity of Bitcoin, and mm -hmm. so is everybody else, right? And, and I use an analogy to a bridge in this article, and I say, you know, if you were maintaining a bridge, and I, you don't have to know very much about bridges, but you just need to know that if they're not properly built or properly maintained or properly engineered, they will collapse, and everybody on them at the time will, you know, be injured or die as a result. And so we have a very well-engineered system in Bitcoin. It uses a lot of things, but if you were, I ask, if you were running a bridge and people kept coming up to you and saying, <clears throat> I want you to use cheaper components that aren't as robust because they're better for the environment. Um, now the consequence might be that the bridge collapses, but I feel my virtue signaling is done. Or I want you to compromise the quality of the of the product of the of the bridge so that it can be cheaper. Right? We, people talk about like cheaper transactions uh, on some other chains that aren't actually decentralized. So all these compromises that everybody demands, and and Bitcoiners stand guard in front and they say no, 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 no to everything that's a compromise. So ultimate. Uh, so I ask if if you were then labeled as toxic. What would, you know, would you then compromise everything so that you would lose the label? And my conclusion in this is like, if you answered yes to any of these demands, then your bridge will collapse, killing the people who happened to be on it at the time. But if you said no to all of these things, then congratulations, both you and your bridge have integrity. And that's the key, that's the key thing about like, both Bitcoiners and Bitcoin have integrity. They haven't, Bitcoin is a design system like a bridge has integrity. Bitcoiners, like the guardians of a good bridge, the maintainers of a good bridge, have integrity as individuals because, frankly, you can trust us to not destroy the bridge. You know, Bitcoin's credo is don't trust, verify, which is, fine, which is kind of what, what, what we're all doing. But I'm saying, like, you can trust the Bitcoin community to not use defective cryptographic functions to not dilute the uh, decentralization of the network, to not let anyone, let alone the richest man in the world, get control of Bitcoin. So for us, the, a price crash as denominated in fiat dollars is not, is no skin off our backs, if that's the expression. It's no skin off our back because we would never consider compromising the integrity of Bitcoin for a short-term price gain that would lead to the collapse of all of Bitcoin. Like that, what a stupid thing to do and what a stupid thing to suggest. And so we're, we ignore it, we laugh at it, right? Like we, we, don't ev we don't take it seriously and say, hmm, you know what? Elon Musk might drive the price up to $65,000 today if we just insert something into Bitcoin that will cause Bitcoin to ultimately become centralized and ultimately collapse and ultimately not be worthy of our love. <laughs> like he, Elon Musk can go fuck himself if that's what he thinks. Now, I, I'm, I want to give Elon a little bit of credit. I don't want, I, um, as someone who hasn't had years to study Bitcoin and is distracted by other things and, and I don't want to give him too much credit because he may be compromised by all sorts of other things. I don't, yeah, I don't want to run out of excuses. You know what I'm saying? It's just so much content information. Yeah. You know, it's just, I it's, I, I, it's I think there. Big, yeah. It's, Elon Musk is an interesting character. I, I'm sorry to talk over you. Um, no, sorry to interrupt you. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. he, uh, it's, it's, it's his incentives. You know, it's the system he's being fed by. You know, mm. it's the so subsidized, yeah. you know, contracts, yeah. the governmental sub. That's uh, the point I was going to make, right? You know, yeah. he, he is a product. I, you know, I, I think this is kind of, this is a really interesting lesson in integrity. Um, because once you compromise your integrity to some things, it's really hard to get it back. And I don't know that Elon actually had a value system that said, if you accept money from the government for reasons that aren't valid in nature, then you will be beholden to those things that aren't true in reality. And I think by taking these, the, by taking grants for green energy that wasn't really truly green, right? Like the cars are powered by an electricity generated by burning coal. They're not necessarily clean. And I, I don't know everything about, you know, I, I, like I'm all, I'm really all for <laughs> producing as much clean energy as possible. Uh, but I think it needs to be done in a sustainable way, which is a way n that isn't sitting on the back of fiat money, which is thievery from other people who are trying to produce things. But he's, he got caught in that. And so there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not he actually needed to say it or didn't. And th there's a part of me that 
uh, feels pity. Uh, for, you know, if, if Elon had to stop taking Bitcoin on Tesla's website, not because he doesn't want to take Bitcoin, not because he believes that Bitcoin is bad for the environment, because there's evidence that he believes that Bitcoin's not bad for the environment. There's evidence that he believes that Bitcoin is good, but because he's not really in charge of Tesla. It, Tesla is beholden to all these other interests because it's, it's ne it necessitates the receipt of fiat grants from a government that is busy telling a story that it's, it's pursuing greenness by, by, again, not doing anything that's genuinely good for the environment, that genuinely reduces carbon emissions. I mean, the government, as just <laughs> one aside, if the economy slows down just a little bit, they'll print money like crazy to stimulate consumption, right. which consumes which consumes energy and puts more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So let's not let's not pretend that the government the government will pursue economic growth at all costs, especially including the environment. Right? They'll pay lip service to the environment. They they won't actually take real action. Not that I want them to try to t take any action. I, I think I think Bitcoin's going to fix the environment, but that's that's probably a topic for another thing. So. I, just to, to kind of end this rant, I wanted to give Bitcoiners, I, I want to judge Bitcoiners fairly in this article, and I judged them, and I judged them innocent, innocent of toxicity. And in fact, their, what, what their trait is, is the virtue of, it, the virtue of integrity, not the vice of toxicity. Right? Bitcoiners are virtuous because they're defending and protecting something that matters to them. And you can see that they're prepared to pay with, with their money for integrity. So they're wonderful. And I, in the subtitle of the article, I say, you know, the difference between I, I should I, I would like to reformulate this, but I also kind of like it in the time of it, which is a, the difference between toxicity and integrity is in the eye of the beholder. And it says much at the judgment, the label that the beholder puts on somebody uh, is more, much more a function, is much more judgment on them than on the people that they're labeling. Because I do point out in the article, if we live in a civilization that looks at integrity and labels that as poison, as toxicity, then our society has become terribly inverted. And sadly, it has. All right. So I, I judge back on a society that says the virtuous are toxic and say, I find you guilty of something i haven't quite defined what the charge is but it's something sickening um you should admire virtue you should admire integrity you should respect integrity and, and i do say you know imagine if some of these other institutions that have become so compromised and so corrupted actually had integrity themselves we would have a better education system we would have a better health care system we would have better government we would have we would have many many better um, institutions and the reason that they're not good is because they lack integrity they have compromised on objective principles and so they make excuse to welcome more people in to get more grants to be more popular whatever it is you know they've sold out guess what bitcoiners are never doing and, and this is kind of like a double meaning we never sell out right and and, and in, in a double stand in a double not a double standard in a double meaning like we're never selling our bitcoins this is the part that people still don't understand. Like, this is a one-way trade. I'm in Bitcoin. I'm dying on that hill. I, I cited that tweet thread where everybody joined in um, behind Jack Mahler's after he said he'll die on this hill. And we all said, I'll die on this hill. I will die on this hill. I will die on this hill. I will die on this hill. Like, we are committed because we're people of integrity. And uh, I don't make no apology for it. I think I say that in the article, too. Like, I, I'm, I don't feel guilty for having integrity. Sorry. And I don't feel sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Like, I do not feel guilty for having integrity. If you want to make me, try to make me feel guilty for having integrity, you can waste your breath all you want. Um, and I'm obviously not directing that at you, Kayvon. I'm directing it at Bitcoin's critics. Um, they can try to make us feel guilty all they want. I feel nothing but pride about being a Bitcoiner. I feel nothing but pride about Bitcoin. I feel pride of my fellow Bitcoiners. They are amazing people. I've met more incredible people with integrity. I looked for integrity my whole life. I finally found it in Bitcoin and Bitcoiners. So zero apologies, zero sorriness. Bitcoin is great and we will keep it that way. Um, and we're prepared to work 
for generations for it. Like I may not live to see all, I, I know I won't live to see all the benefits of Bitcoin because Bitcoin's going to continue to deliver benefits for thousands and millions of years to come to humanity. But, uh, but I'm going to keep it on track, right? And I, I will die on the hill of, of preserving and protecting um, the integrity that we see in this system. And, and that's kind of one of these other things. If I could go back and rewrite why Bitcoin is worthy of love, it is Bitcoin is, heart, Bitcoin is incorruptible. We can protect it, right? Elon can run a different version of Bitcoin if he wants, but it's not Bitcoin anymore. The Bitcoin that we all love and cherish is the one that we get to enforce because he can't buy, he can't take it over. He can't buy it out. Uh, like we are not selling out, so nobody can buy it out. I don't, I don't want to pick on Elon too much because there's so many villains in this world who are even worse than him who are enemies of Bitcoin. Um, and so uh, you're welcome to, you're welcome to try. Uh, you gotta you gotta kill a lot of bitcoiners to sh to shut it down you got you gotta compromise a lot of bitcoiners to shut it down and, and we're not compromising and and we're not um we're not capitulating one inch like we're not giving and that, that may be the last point i want to make that was also in this article um is that's the white bitcoin white paper behind me uh it's huge i'll, I'll get up and show you how big a <laughs> copy of it i have because that's my that's my constitution, right? And, and every promise that was made in Bitcoin in 2008 and delivered on by Satoshi Nakamoto still holds. We haven't compromised, you know, as opposed to the constitution, uh, the, the, you know, the, the Bill of Rights, um, where, every, where the government doesn't uphold the Bill of Rights. It's every day, every law, every law that's passed seems to be in direct contradiction to some aspect of the Bill of Rights. And now we've had like a hundred years of chiseling away at every individual right. And it feels like that dam is about to burst towards totalitarianism, if it hasn't already. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how far we've come, but we're nowhere near a free people. We're taxed. I, I don't want to make that seem like the biggest things. Our speech rights are limited. Our property rights are terribly limited. Uh, all of these things are, are becoming terribly, terribly limited all around the world. And, uh, and that's because we gave, we as a people, we gave a little bit here, we gave a little bit there, we compromised a little bit on measures that were supposed to be temporary. Right? Every one of these temporary government measures just to deal with some emergency became permanent and then became amplified. Right? Like you pick an event in history that caused the government to pass a law for security or for taxation or for something, it's still there. It has, the emergency's gone away, but the law, the restriction is still there, and the restriction's been ratcheted up uh, rather than relaxed. So we know what good a promise from a government about a temporary measure is. Uh, but Bitcoin still delivers on all those promises. Why? Because Bitcoiners haven't given an inch and won't give an inch. So I'm not giving an inch. There will only be 21 million Bitcoin. The blocks will come every 10 minutes. If anything, the blocks will get smaller rather than bigger. We'll build on the second layer. Like none of those things are changing. You can cry harder as Francois, as Francis uh, Puyo says, like that's all you can do because these things aren't changing. They're, they're a given end of story. And that's because we have integrity. So that's, whew, that gets me fired up. Ooh, beautiful the, said. Righteous indignation. Yeah. Um, we're on the moral, we're on the right side of morality on this one. You made so many really excellent points. Um, first of all, I mean, what you call integrity, I used to call it like principles of ethos or ethical principles. I mean, whatever you would call yeah. it, just it's part integrity is one, one principle. There, there, are, there are many other principles, like you should be productive, you should be rational, right? Like there, there's a lot of virtuous principles to have. Integrity is a very, very, very important one. If you compromise any of them, it, here's an interesting point. If you compromise any of the principles, you've compromised your integrity. So it's like <laughs> integrity actually, it says, I live by principle, right? Mm -hmm. I, everything I do is, is in principle. I'm, I'm not, I cannot be compromised on anything and it's hard to do. And so I think there are, you're going to make mistakes in life. You're going to have regrets in life. What can you do about it? I think if you've done harm to somebody because, because of a lack of integrity, and if you've told a lie that you shouldn't have told, you should apologize for it. You should try to make amends if you can, I mean, if you've caused someone, sometimes all you can do is apologize, right? Like life happens and you can't undo, like time goes in one direction, right? So you can't undo what you've done, but you can apologize and you can try to correct things. Money doesn't fix everything. So it's not always writing a check or sending a signed UTXO um, that, that fixes everything. 
But that, that, that's what you can do to get back on the track of integrity. But you can't continue to uphold that lie and try to find integrity. You can't continue to take fiat grants forever and act and believe that you have that you're acting in integrity because you're stealing from savers, right? You're stealing from the working class and the middle class uh, who are trying to earn money, and you're taking printed money that's generated with no with no effort. So, if you want your integrity back, Elon, stop taking government grants. Start asking for more money. Start taking Bitcoin as payment again, um, and start working towards genuine, clean, abundant energy that comes from sources like solar and nuclear and hydro and let's build this abundant energy civilization without lying about bitcoin uh, and without giving in to special interests who are going to once again end up forcing you to say something that you don't believe uh, that isn't true and create and and demonstrating who in civilization is corruptible and who is not like it's a wonderful litmus test and you know i'm grateful that elon put Bitcoin to the test so that the world could see that Bitcoiners are incorruptible and have integrity. Exactly. It's the ultimate so, test. So it's thank, a you. Test. Like, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, Elon, for yeah. not taking Bitcoin anymore and for threatening to go all in on Dogecoin and, th and so that Bitcoiners could show the world that we have integrity. I, I really, I, I actually am grateful for that. That's not a sarcastic comment. And, uh, and when, whenever you're ready to align with the integrity ethos of Bitcoin, you're of course welcome back because as I said, we can't st we don't want to stop anybody from taking Bitcoin. And even if we did, we can't because Bitcoin is permissionless. And if we try to stop someone from taking Bitcoin, then we, we will have compromised the integrity of the Bitcoin system because the Bitcoin system says anybody in the world, anytime, anywhere can use it. It's permissionless. It's censorship resistant. So even if we don't particularly like Elon, he's still welcome to use Bitcoin and there's nothing any Bitcoiner can do about it. How's that for integrity? That's exactly. Listen, Tom. I mean, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't admire people like um, uh, Elon Musk or Peter Thiel in their positions. I mean, you know, there's a freedom of choice. People got themselves in a position of, of being biased, of being dependent on, you know, whether it be government, military, industrial intelligence complex, or what have you. The thing is that I mean, if we just, if I just look from the outside, you know, and I, and I, and I see, you know, what kind of, you know, visions Elon Musk has or whoever, you know, in this space. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, when they talk about artificial intelligence, neural link and, you know, the mm -hmm. future of, of mm -hmm. space travel, mm -hmm. like, and I'm like, why do we, why do you want to fuck it up? I mean, this is a one in a humanities, you know, time uh, chance opportunity to, to make this right, to make this correct and, yeah. and to finally evolve into, yeah. you know, usher into a new civilization, whether it be right. on a spiritual level, technological, okay. scientific let, level. Let, let, me, let me put something really interesting out there. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about you, Elon. Um, so Elon comes to the world with these really interesting visions of becoming a multi-planetary species of clean self-driving cars of people able to connect technology straight into their minds. These are really interesting ideas. So I, I, I'll go back to the two other articles that I mentioned. These are arguably magnificent ideas and Elon Musk is potentially a magnificent person of great proportion, but he can't be magnificent for the, because he lives in a fiat world. And the only way to make these things happen and get them going is you know the government took over space travel so he has to appeal to government in the fiat world to become a space explorer the government has all these distortions around carbon credits and this and that so he has to bow bend the knee to government to build so so as i said in the article why we need bitcoin is to be your magnificent self you need sound money so that you don't have to be behold the puppet of, it's exactly what i wrote in the article so you don't have to be the puppet of the government and here He's pursuing magnificent goals, but he can only pursue them in a fiat world by becoming a government puppet, and that compromises him. So if, if Elon actually had Bitcoin, if we had a sound money standard, someone with Elon's vision, potentially Elon himself, could actually raise the capital properly, explore space properly, build these cars properly. So more, you know, Elon does need Bitcoin, more, maybe more than any of us to achieve these one, you know, you know, these civilization changing revolutions. And that's what, but it starts with Bitcoin. Bitcoin fixes this. We, it's the base layer. If you don't have sound money, you end up with everything above 
everything that needs money above it compromised, right? And any engineer will tell you if, if your foundation is fucked, everything that you build on top of it is. So, you know, it, to the extent that you're building a business, which is something to do with money or an enterprise that, that has lots of people involved who need to get paid, it's with money. If you build it on unsound money, it's going to be an unsound business. And if you build it on sound money, it's going to be sound. So again, just a really strong appeal to everyone at SpaceX and Tesla and Neuralink. <laughs> like you're, you're trying to change civilization in a f magnificent way for the future. You need to build it on a sound foundation. And that sound foundation is Bitcoin. It's not Dogecoin, you know, it, and it's not the U S dollar and it's not, um, it's not any other made up instrument. It's Bitcoin. And I'd be happy to take a hundred hours of my time for free to sit down and talk to people and explain to them why Bitcoin is sound money. And I'm doing that in my writings, but I'm happy to t take time on things like podcasts and meeting with people in person uh, to explain that because it will just fix so much and it makes civilization so much better. It would solve yeah. so many of our problems. And you create, you know, all these, uh, you know, beautiful educational materials, whether it be podcasts, articles, you know, it's not because you're bored or you want to entertain people. It's, you know, there's an intention behind it, right? Uh, like well, both, both. I, to, so yeah, I, no, I, I'm not bored. I'm not. Of course. I, no, of the course last not. thing I'm is bored. Uh, but I do want to entertain people and I do want to educate people. Mm -hmm. And I want to share this. I, you know, I, I don't think I have to. Uh, declare, <laughs> declare my love for Bitcoin again, given what I've just said over the last 45 minutes on, the, on this show. This is something I'm very passionate about, um, and and my reasons for my passion for it are are explained in the articles or if you, in what I've said so far on your show already today. So we have one more piece to go and talk about Satoshi and me. Go ahead. <laughs> it was a fabulous article, man. I mean, it was just I had to read it like three times. Oh but... wow. Yeah, because of course, you know, it starts off with, uh, you know, very on a very erotic sexual level, but then, porn. Yeah, Let's but say, it starts but off it's, like porn. Yeah, but it's a very conscious you you get like you you get the gist out of it very mm -hmm. fast. You know, after the few first few lines, it's like mm -hmm. you go into the consciousness into the soul into the comprehension process, you know, mm -hmm. of enlightenment. Uh, right? It, yeah. So <laughs> so, so what is Satoshi and me? I, I don't know. It's, it's an original piece of writing. Is, is it a short story? Is it fan fiction? Is it porn? Is it a love story? Um, it's again, for people who want to read it, the, the first paragraph has very strong words. It has one very strong word in it over and over and over and over again, <laughs> the F word, which I've already said on this podcast. Uh, and, um, and so if you get past the first paragraph, it'll take you on a journey of love um it's it's a it, it the story has a protagonist who falls in love with bitcoin i don't know where the inspiration for that kind of protagonist comes from and tells their story of how they fall in love with bitcoin by researching and, and how they actually fall in love with satoshi uh for the heroic achievements in engineering and economics and sociology and game theory and for the sacrifices the Satoshi made like, you know, Satoshi got neither fame nor fortune because Satoshi isn't Satoshi Nakamoto. It's someone, something else, right? It's, it's certainly, there isn't someone named Satoshi Nakamoto and you can't see them. So Satoshi waived all the fame, waived all the fortune. Those million coins that are uh, thought to be theirs haven't moved. And let's face it, they're, they're never going to move. Um, so Satoshi waived all that to make Bitcoin the system of integrity, right? It isn't pre-mined because even the accusations that are an unearned guilt on Satoshi that Vitalik, who is guilty of the accusations he levies, um, uh, are Satoshi never pre-mined the coins. He never spent them. He, you know, he, he had to mine it to keep Bitcoin going initially, but, but it's gone. So, so the protagonist falls in love out of this heroic thing of Satoshi and is determined to get to know Satoshi, even though they live in a time after. And I'm going to leave, I'm not going to spoil any more of what happens in the story. Um, cause I, I'd love for you to read it and go through the emotions of the whole thing, but that's what this story, um, is about. And, and for people who are kind of learning about Bitcoin a little bit, it's, it, it's got a technical section in it. I, I it's, it's, 
that describe i wouldn't say so much a technical section but it's got a section that talks about the technology the, the technologies that were used in creating bitcoin and you don't have to understand them all if you're a reader like i say to some readers who are new to bitcoin i say just read it as you would if you're watching a star trek episode and you hear scotty saying the warp core is going to overload and we need to reverse the polarity uh, but I, but i'll say every single thing in there is actually true it's real technology it's not it's not fiction all of these things actually are discoveries that Satoshi or integrations that Satoshi made or other people made who are given credit for having made those things. Um, and it's a reasonably short section, but so you might learn a little thing about how Bitcoin works uh, while you read it. But the, the goal of that section is to appreciate what an achievement of engineering and beyond Bitcoin is. And, and then it's to express to Satoshi since he doesn't get the reward of wealth and fame to give him another reward. And, um, and, and, and that reward is expressed in the interplay between Satoshi and the, uh, and the protagonist. So I, I that's what, that's what motivated me to write this. I, I, I do view Satoshi as, as one of these heroes, like a legendary hero in humankind and civilization for what Satoshi accomp invented, accomplished, you know, created, let out onto the world and kept its integrity, right? Like here's someone who never compromised the integrity of Bitcoin, even though there could have been all these temptations to do so for power, for wealth, for fame. Look at this. Here's, here's the guidepost of how Bitcoiners have integrity. Um, so whoever they were, I mean, it, just an extraordinary, extraordinary heroic achievement. And, um, and I, I'm actually, I, I think I'm supposed to be doing today on Twitter spaces at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. So I guess that's 10.30 GMT p.m. Um, with Pete Rizzo. He's the guy who wrote uh, the recent article on the 10th anniversary of Satoshi's disappearance in Bitcoin magazine. He wrote the article, The Last Days of Satoshi Nakamoto, which is a really well-researched journalistic article about the life and times of Satoshi Nakamoto, but it, it, it talks about what went around, like what posts Satoshi made, what email Satoshi sent, and what people around Satoshi did at the time. And it tries to, it tries to say, well, it doesn't try to like unmask him and say, who was he? It tries to say, like, who is a person? What can we tell about the person and what was going on politically through it? And so I think that's kind of this interesting documentary. Uh, and mine is, Satoshi and me is not a documentary. It, although, as I say, it does document some of the things that's, that Satoshi integrated, uh, but it is, it's, a, it's a work of art intended to idolize uh, someone who I think is worthy of being I idolized. And I know Bitcoiners say, you know, be prepared to kill your heroes. Um, but for the time being, and I think this is therefore for all time, because we're never going to see Satoshi again, Satoshi's earned the label of uncompromised hero. Right. And that's I, I, why I wanted to create this work of art to idolize mm -hmm. him. I had Dominic Frisbee on my show and I read his book before that, you know, uh, the, his Bitcoin book. And he did some really, uh, really awesome investigative research into this uh, whole, you know, into the life or the communication correspondence of, of uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. But there's uh, there's a person, a guy who is who was very close to Satoshi Nakamoto. Allegedly, he's he's got lots of emails or, you know, communication which he had, I'm not, I'm not even sure. I mean, is, has everything been disclosed already or, or are there some parts of it that like, that hasn't been disclosed to the public yet? Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't care uh, to unmask. I think, it's, I think anyone pursuing kind of the unmasking of Satoshi Nakamoto is- uh, no, Not about unmasking, but I'm right. like, you know, the process of his thinking process is whatever, whatever he said, like mm -hmm. how, what, you know, what, what was what was what were his thoughts his his uh, his uh, if he wrote them down somewhere I, I think it i think it would be great to put in some in some um museum somewhere right mm -hmm. so that we could we could actually see more into the lens but as things stand now at this point in time in history we have we have this in this person who I, and i do say this in the story who solved the problem computer scientists and mathematicians in academia had claimed was impossible to solve the Byzantine generals problem. They had proofs that it couldn't be solved. Right? And like in the same way that there are physicists who say, I can prove to you with physics that bumblebees can't fly. 
Well, you know, the bumblebees do fly, <laughs> and so your, phys your theory is wrong, um, and, but it takes an extraordinary act to prove all these things wrong. And we have Bitcoin, which proves that the Byzantine general's problem has a solution. And lo and behold, in, in fact, the, you know, so Satoshi kind of did the impossible. I mean, the, the, the proofs were flawed, right? But he confronted the impossible. And I think that's another one of these signs of like, so not only did he create Bitcoin, I think he demonstrates as a hero, the kind of hope that if someone's telling you something's impossible, they might be wrong. And the, the, the allegedly impossible might be possible. It might be achievable. Are you listening, Elon? Right? Like maybe you can't actually run a space program without being beholden to the government. Maybe you can produce clean cars without being beholden to the government. Maybe it's not impossible to do those things. So, um, so again, just what a, what an incredible role model uh, Satoshi is. And so that's why I, I, I wrote my piece. I, I didn't know, I didn't know that Pete Rizzo was writing his article, but I was, I had finished writing my article kind of on that or my story on the day that the article came out. I didn't even know that it was, I, 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 I guess I should have known, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't concerned with at the time. I wasn't distracted by, oh, it's up the 10th anniversary of Satoshi's disappearance is coming. Uh, but I finished it right beforehand. And then I heard the article and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really glad I wrote the story because the article is a good piece of journalism, but it can't express the heroic achievement of Satoshi Nakamoto because the heroic achievement was when he showed up on the scene having invented Bitcoin <laughs> and and the fact that uh, and it's not what he did do afterwards it's so much what he didn't do right he didn't spend coins willy-nilly he didn't undermine the project he didn't centralize it he didn't he, like he didn't it's all these things that he didn't do which all these other shit coins still do, right? And all the founders of these other shit coins still do, or all these people who try to take them over still do. And so it, it's just, it's really extraordinary. And, um, and that's that I think if you look at these two pieces together, they maybe give you a, a kind of this bigger picture, a little bit of a reflection into what was happening through history in the real world while Satoshi was here, but much more important to zoom out and the big picture human history was going along, fiat money came along and started to destroy civilization. And out of nowhere, an anonymous, a pseudonymous individual gave the world, invented this thing and gave it to the world as a gift and asked for nothing in return. And that's pretty extraordinary, if you ask me. Yeah. Pretty historic. Definitely. You know, I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding the humility and the being the, you know, so uh, selfless and so what would you call it heroic mm -hmm. uh, uh, spiritual even maybe even right. you know uh, non without any ego without any you know desire yeah. like to, to whatever you know control or, or wealth or mm -hmm. uh, so i don't know i think humanity has has to learn a lot to evolve and and i think this is our chance you know to finally evolve uh, uh you know on a, on a conscious level on a, on a spiritual yeah. level even you know yeah well Kayvon, thank you yeah. for having me on your show, man. Like, this has been a great chat. Thank you. Like, I, I feel like I've had a cathartic <laughs> Well, thank you. No, I really enjoyed this. Can we hope we can enjoy this and continue a little bit, you know, deep, dig a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole next time sure. uh, whenever you are up to it. But hey, uh, uh, before we wrap up, uh, like, is there anything else like we, sh we should have said or, I, um, or you want to? Oh, mention? there's so there's so much to talk about. But I, I think I think this was a really great bite of a topic, right? It's like all this stuff to do with love and Bitcoin and Satoshi. And so I really am glad that we pre-planned this and it got it got to focus on this. And there's a million other things to talk about. Bitcoin has so many facets. We could we could do an hour on almost any other facet, but I think this was a really original topic and, and I'm glad we did. I'm glad we had integrity about what we were talking about and we didn't dilute it by talking about 16 other things about Bitcoin. Yeah. We talked about Bitcoin and Bitcoiners and Satoshi and love and integrity. And uh, that was a real thrill and a real joy. Well, thank you, Tomer. Thomas Rolite, uh so where, pe where can pe people find you? ThomasRolite.medium.com and on Swan yeah. Bitcoin? So, um, so yeah, my, my Medium articles are at ThomasRolite.Bitcoin.com. On Twitter, I'm there with, um, still keeping my laser eyes, at ThomasRolite. And uh, the 26 article series of Why Bitcoin, which are all three minutes, art, three minute long articles covering a wide variety of facets of Bitcoin, two of which we discussed, two of those articles which we discussed here is, is 
available one by one at um, at my medium. But Swan Bitcoins prepared an ebook of all 26 of these articles. One of those articles is not available on medium.com. And it's a really cool article called Why Bitcoin Will Lend the Worst Heist in History. So I really urge you go to swanbitcoin.com slash why Bitcoin, download the free ebook. Th that one article is also available on their blog. So you, you can probably find it if you Google search for it, but just download the whole ebook. Uh, it's totally free. Um, you can view it on your computer or you can print it out. Um, and I continue to write articles in a bunch of places, but I think those, I think those are the three most important places I'd send people to. My stream of consciousness is on Twitter. My writings show up on Medium and they're also available on uh, swanbitcoin.com, where, which is a good Bitcoin only right. company. Man, Tomer, thank you so much. I love your work and hope we can do this thank again you. in the future. Yeah. All right. Take I'd be care. very happy to meet with you again. You too. Okay, Tomer. Bye bye. Bye bye. So what did you guys think? I mean, that was a hell of a episode. I really enjoyed this. We really went into the U U multiversal cosmic rabbit hole of the essence of the true essence of Bitcoin, what it means, you know, within and beyond Bitcoin. And uh, it was really enlightening, conscious, expanding to talk with Thomas Trollite about, you know, love, about the essence of giving, about the essence of creating, about the essence, you know, of integrity, of ethos. Uh, of vision of human evolution so uh, hope you enjoyed this please make sure you follow Tomer on uh, Twitter read his amazing brilliant fascinating articles uh, which I'm gonna put in the show notes and yeah subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast platform let me know if you have any questions have any follow-up discussions panel discussions or interviews I should do maybe even together you know again with Thomas Strelight in a panel discussion maybe I think we need to talk more, you know, about psychology, emotions, uh, the soul, you know, the the real root causes of what, what is what is hindering us to evolve, uh, you know, in an accelerated rate of speed, um, so we can usher, you know, on every level you can think of, not only structurally but you know, scientifically, technologically, spiritually, economically, of course, uh, but also, you know, as a human civilization, as a species. Uh, within our consciousness, within our heart and soul and emotions, right? So, yeah, hope you really enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Uh, and my DM is open. You can reach me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Telegram, what have you. Or just send me an email at uh, kd at kvandavani.com. I'm the host of the Kvandavani Connection Show with Unconditional Love.